Okay, another video to talk through rules. Um, we are looking at my new uh, pizza time table that I'm still working on, but I currently have it through the rules phase and on to, let's see which ones of these I can turn off, and on to, um, I've done the rules, and then after that I do the design, and then after that I do, um, I do all the coding. So what I mean by rules is not actually writing them in code per se, but thinking about how your table is going to play. And I'm going to give you my, um, my kind of own personal feeling on that. Um, and then you guys, obviously it's your game. You can do whatever you want, but how I feel a table should be played is that there should be one main, there should be at least one main task. Um, so if we think about uh, a lot of the great games out there, there is even, uh, let's say, Medieval Madness, it's straightforward. We're just trying to get castles. Um, and there's other things around. And obviously, Attack from Mars plays the same. It's essentially the same game. But um, let's think like uh, Scared Stiff then I'm, I'm trying to collect things that get me to the scared stiff. Um, and so the stiffo meter um, or monster bash. I'm trying to do the different monsters that get me to a monster bash, right? So um, having a simple base uh, setup for your game is going to make it really easy for people to get in and have a good time. Um, Again, you can disagree if you don't like that way of doing it. Stern's new games are obviously not that way. I've played probably 50 games of Star Wars and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and I personally think that kind of sucks. I'd rather play Medieval Madness or uh, really any of the old uh, Williams games over a, a game of that Star Wars any day. But don't get me wrong, um, some people like that, but my feeling is try to think about what is something that you can make harder and harder um, because as much as you think that uh, the rules for your game are going to be hard, there's a lot of people out there that are really damn good at pinball and you've got to try to look at it as some kind of an expansive experience that most likely you as the designer are going to have a very difficult time ever beating. Um, I, it took me maybe a year to beat, um, to beat stranger things. Um, and that was awesome. I, I love that. That's great. Other people probably beat it in the first day and didn't even think about it. So, um, but that's kind of the level we're thinking. So on this one, let's look at it here. So my table, the main goal of this table is to collect ingredients for a pizza. So at the start, you're given a, a pizza wheel spins and it'll tell you, you have to get a meat lovers. Um, and so if I was on this first pizza, I have to collect four ingredients. Once I do, the pizza will open up. I lock the ball and that starts pizza time. So that would be essentially, if you think about it, my first castle down. Uh, then the next one has double the slices, so I have to get eight ingredients. So it would spin again, maybe I get a, a veggie lovers or I get whatever else. Uh, and then I have to collect the ingredients, I make pizza, we go on to the next one. And each one of those is giving me a multi-ball uh, afterwards where I try to then collect the slices. And, and it goes on from there, right, until I have to get 32 slices, which, I mean, that's going to be so hard. <laughs> but um, but, but so that's kind of what we're looking at as my main mode. Now, what I like to do is have, um, ideally, and this is something I'm still working towards, uh, if you think about, if you've played Stranger Things, if you've played Diablo, those two were straightforward main modes, and that's it. And that's going to be your easiest way to code. Um, that's going to leave the game a little bit thin. Um, if we think about Diablo or Stranger Things, Stranger Things has three different multiballs, so it feels a little less thin. But really, you're just collecting those to try to get to the main end boss, and then that's the game. Diablo, you're trying to get through the dungeons to get to the bosses, beat the bosses, and move on. But there's nothing else outside of that. 
that's literally the whole game. And that's going to be your easiest way to code. On Pizza Time, I'm trying to take more of the approach that like Williams did, where I have a main mode, let's say like Medieval Madness, I have Bash in the Castles, and then I have side modes that are to try to collect things. So um, like trying to get Peasant Revolt and all that stuff. So here on my pizza panels are going to be the different modes. Again, if we think about this, maybe like Indiana Jones has all these modes, but then you're also trying to lock balls up the center um, for that multi-ball. Uh, and so I have a secondary set of modes that are on these pizza panels where people uh, will be able to try to collect all those modes. If they do, there'll be a big multi-ball. And so the, the total game is can you collect all those modes and can you get, and there'll be a wizard mode if you collect all the modes. Can I collect all the pizzas? There'll be a wizard mode if I got all the pizzas. And then there'd be a super wizard mode if I could do all the modes and all the pizzas. And that's again where it's like, I will most likely never be able to do that, but, but people will be able to. Other people that are better players will be able to do that. Um, and so um, that's kind of a base um, of what, you know, my feeling is on scores. And so, uh, I also have on this one, if you hit these targets, then you can lock a ball here. So I have a completely ancillary multi-ball that's going to be in there. Uh, that's not a mode. That's not part of the pizza thing. It's just a random other thing thrown in there. And I kind of like that when you think of a bunch of the different games out there like Shadow and all these others, they'll have multi-balls that are just kind of off to the side. Uh, I think it's fun to give users a lot of different ways to have multi-balls. Obviously, when you're in a multi-ball experience as a player, it's fun because you really amped. People love that. It's it's crazy. It's wild. And, and it, I think that's kind of you know really one of the best parts of pinball in general. So, um, so I like to have an ancillary one. Uh, and then you just need to think about what your shots are outside of that. So you can see I've got bonuses. Um, people go either way on bonuses. Uh, on most of my games, I don't add them because I kind of think they're stupid. But this one, I will be adding them because it's a base part of pinball, and I'm going to give it a go. But uh, you can see on my loops here, I've got the ability for six stars to be lit. Over here on the right, I have the ability for three pizza surfers to be lit. I've got drop targets here, um, and uh, and yeah, so that gives me the ability. I've got three here if I hit this super bumper. Uh, that gives me kind of the ability to finish modes, to give people things to hit. Each one of these has an arrow, right? So they have arrows on them that can be flashing. So why I tell you guys to start with this before you start with the design is that if you don't, then you're going to get some maybe great looking design but it's going to be a garbage table it's not going to be any fun um really the rules are one of the hardest but to be honest it's one of the most fun parts to sit down and think about you get a theme and then start building out your ideas around um ideally try to think of a main path let's say if you were doing a movie a movie table is generally always going to have a singular path that is progressing through the movie um, so if you were doing a, you know, let's just say a Goonies table, um, then you're trying to get One-Eyed Willie's treasure. So what things do you need to do to get to find One-Eyed Willie's treasure? Um, you know, and so that's a, I mean, that right there sounds really damn fun. Um, you know, but on the side, you might have uh, either a truffle shuffle mode, or you might, you know, you could add in some fun stuff like that. This is, again, just kind of ancillary, but try to give the the player a real direct goal um, and ideally goes along um, you know whatever the theme is and it feels real natural um, and so if you can think about those things first um, then that's really going to help you uh, it's really going to help you dictate the art um, like I wouldn't have known to put these pizzas like this unless I knew that that's how I was going to do it and I wouldn't have known to put the pizza paddles around it to do the modes unless I knew I was going to have modes. So don't just jump into design. I, I highly suggest that you start with your rule set. Again, we're not coding it. We're just thinking through your rule set so you can say, okay, like I've got it dialed in. I know like, okay, you're going to have these things like, okay, I want to have six modes, but how am I going to start that mode? 
okay, well, I guess I need some kind of a dugout, some kind of a kicker to hit it to, to start a mode. So I need to, I'm going to need to put a kicker somewhere prominent on my table. And so my kicker is right here. Um, and you can see I've got three lights here and those light up if a mode's ready or um, if it's pizza time and stuff like that. So um, think about thinking through your, your rules will really help you decide what you need to put on that table and then what design elements need to be around it. So again, that's, uh, that's the next step. Uh, after this, uh, I think the next video I'm going to talk about is layout and design. Um, and how I suggest going into once you have a rule set, once you have kind of a play field idea, then how do we design this thing? How do we get it laid out and working right? And what's a great structure to do that? So that will be up next on the next video. I'm not going to be able to do that tonight, unfortunately. Um, but I will try to get that a little quicker than these last two came. Uh, I didn't know if actually anybody would ever watch these. It seems like some of you guys are. Um, and that's fantastic. I hope they help. Um, and so keep bugging me, honestly, if I'm not making them, like just bug the hell out of me and I'll do it. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope this helped uh, and hope you, uh, you know, get down to making yourself a table and uh, let me know any questions you have. I'm on the Visual Pinball Addicts uh, Facebook group. So under Scott Wickberg, so you can find me there. You can hit me up. I'm cool to chat whenever. So uh, let me know where you're at and what you're doing and I'll try to help. All right, thanks. Bye.